Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 ways beer shaped human civilization. Hybrid cars, computers, those terrible smartphone games everyone's hooked on, humanity, it's certainly come a long way since our cave-dwelling, hunting and gathering Quasimodo-looking forefathers. But why? What drove all of these fantastic exhibitions of human achievements? Well, some of the biggest accomplishments in the history of mankind came about because of beer, which is ironic since beer is also one of the biggest causes of stupidity. The modern world was shaped by booze, the miracle elixir that gives us that warm, fuzzy feeling, followed by that headachey, I'm going to die feeling. These accomplishments, well, they include. Number 10. The Great Pyramid of Giza Egypt will forever be associated with its famed pyramids because those gargantuan things are particularly impressive, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza. About 5,000 years ago, soon after the pharaoh Khufu took the throne, he realized that his soul was going to need somewhere to crash for eternity after his death. All the good pyramids, well, they were taken, so he commissioned the building of the 455-foot behemoth, which remains the tallest man-made structure on the planet for almost 4,000 years. An exorbitant amount of workers, estimated between 20 and 30,000, labored in the hot Egyptian sun for about 23 years. Cutting, dragging, and placing limestone bricks wasn't easy work, especially when you're getting them almost 500 feet up. There had to be some sort of motivational thing to inspire the workers, who were primarily farmers, doing this in their downtime almost every day. That motivational force was an estimated 231,414,717 gallons of beer. It was a source of nutrition, refreshment, and reward for all the hard work, said Dr. Patrick McGovern, an anthropology professor at the University of Pennsylvania. It was beer for pay. You would have had a rebellion on your hands if they'd run out. The pyramids might not have been built if there hadn't been enough beer. So without beer, the only remaining wonder of the ancient world would not be standing today. History. Well, it goes down smooth. Number 9. Marketing Fast forward to the 1700s, and beer is a driving force behind civilization. The Bass Brewery was founded in 1777, and by the 1890s, it was the most prominent beer company in England and the largest in the world. It was pumping out 1.5 million barrels of the stuff every year. You can make the world's most popular beer of the 19th century until the cows come home, but there's an important element every product needs to resonate with its customers, and that's brand recognition. That's, of course, where marketing comes in. Marketing is a constantly evolving business, but it was terribly archaic in the 1870s, so much so that it wasn't really much of a thing at all. Bass Brewery knew that they had a quality product on their hands, and they marketed it successfully enough to make it the most successful beer brand brand in England, but they needed to think of ways to secure its reputation and grow its brand recognition even more to appeal to people in every walk of life. In doing so, they revolutionized the advertising industry, and it was all in the name of getting people trashed. So how did they do it? Well, number 8. Logos and Trademarks Bass Brewery decided that their beer needed a visual identity, some sort of clear and distinct mark indicating which products were theirs. This was especially important since literacy rates were low, so this would allow uneducated folk to recognize a Bass Brewery drink when they saw it. What they did was they took a red triangle, they put bass underneath it, and splashed that over everything they produced in one of the earliest examples of a logo. They established brand recognition, but what was to stop other breweries from using Bass Brewery's logo on their stuff and taking advantage of their reputation in order to increase their own sales. At the time, nothing, but on the first day of 1876, the British Trademark Registration Act went into effect, and the company's name and logo became the first registered trademark in England. As is evident in the marketing-saturated culture we live in today, advertising and the whole protecting your intellectual property thing took off. So, well, you can thank beer for Geico's Hump Day commercials. Number 7. Soda Around the same time as the founding of the Bass Brewery, an inquisitive English chemist named Joseph Priestley was hard at work publishing over 150 works related to science, theology, politics, and philosophy. In 1767, he moved in next door to a brewery in Leeds. Naturally curious, he paid them a visit and picked their brains about their work. Priestley was fascinated with the gases coming from the vats of beer and got permission from the brewers to perform some experiments. He realized that by pouring water over the vats, it developed a sweet, fizzy flavor. 
Water. In 1772, Priestley released a publication titled Impregnating Water with Fixed Air, in which he announced his new invention called soda water. Priestley's discovery of carbonation eventually led to soda and the billions of dollars of revenue that Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and the like bring in every year, but his experiments in gas also reinvigorated his interest in studying air. Number 6. The Discovery of Oxygen Priestley knew that putting a living organism in a jar and depriving it of air was a death sentence, but he wasn't sure why. As a presumably creepy child, he enjoyed putting spiders in jars and seeing how long they would last before their eyes went dead and their legs stopped wiggling. Continuing his bloodlust-fueled experimentation, he put a plant in a jar and waited for it to die. Not only did that not happen, it actually continued to grow. This excited him, so he continued his work, and several experiments and papers later, Priestley had discovered oxygen gas. We now know it as the third most common element in our universe by mass. Number 5. Refrigeration and Shipping in 1871, German engineer Carl von Linz published a paper on improved refrigeration techniques, which caught the eye of local breweries. The environment required for beer brewing needs to be cold, so production of it had to be put on pause during the warmer months. Beer is a cash cow that the breweries would rather not stop milking for any stretch of time, so von Linz's expertise became highly sought after. Gabriel Sedelmeyer II of the Spaten Brewery asked von Linz to develop a way to keep his brewery cold, so he went ahead and made a refrigerator which before that point didn't yet exist on a scale that would be useful for a brewery. It worked fantastically, and brewing beer became a year-round pursuit in areas where this wasn't previously possible. The implications of von Linz's work were broad. Food could be kept cold and preserved without ice, which was useful both in the home and in the shipping industry. Export of food, and well any product that had to be kept cold, was difficult and oftentimes impossible, so refrigeration opened the floodgates and added a new dimension to long-distance shipping. Refrigeration is also used in air conditioning and a multitude of other fields. Number 4. Modern Medicine Sour milk sucks, as it's a regrettable waste of a perfect and versatile beverage, but the problem would be much worse without French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pasteur. He was asked to help a local brewer who wanted to know why his beer was going sour. He took samples from the vats, looked at them under a microscope, and found thousands of microorganisms which he believed were the cause of the putrefaction that was making the beer taste bad. With this in mind, he invented a process that's known as pasteurization, which involved warming the beer to below boiling point to kill off the bacteria that was spoiling batches. Today, this process is used widely in the food industry, mostly notable in milk and other dairy products. This also led to him disproving spontaneous generation, confirming that matter simply didn't arise out of dust. Using this information as a stepping stone, Pasteur discovered that microorganisms, like those that rendered so much beer worthless, also caused a disease in humans. This school of thought is called germ theory and was the catalyst of modern medicine. Pasteur's work opened the door to research into the identification of disease-causing germs and life-saving treatments. Number 3. Agriculture Let's go back to the rumored origin of beer. Some gatherer left a container of raw barley in the rain, which started the germination process. The barley was then dried and used for baking, or whatever people would have used it for back then, but it was then again left out in the rain, where the partially germinated barley was exposed to natural airborne yeasts, and an extremely primitive version of beer resulted. Probably on a dare or a lost bet, one of these people took a sip and realized this new liquid not only tasted great, but had the same in inebriating effect as his people's honey and fruit based wines. The ancients, well, they loved this stuff, and they needed more of it. But collecting the grains needed to make it would be a lot simpler if all the barley was in one place. From there, driven by an indefatigable desire for more beer, they planted, cultivated, and harvested crops. And with that, agriculture, it was born. Number 2. Written Language Farming is more than sticking seeds in the ground and hoping something emerges from the dirt. There's a lot of organization involved. Farmers have to know what's growing where, how long it's been there for, when it's time to harvest, and other crucial bits of information related to the growth of barley and the brewing of beer. How are you supposed to keep track of that during the dawn of mankind? Some sort of system for recording this information would have been helpful so people could rely less on memory and word of mouth and more on a definite source of accurate information. This
This is where writing comes in. According to Dr. Stephen Tinney, an associate professor of Assyriology at the University of Pennsylvania, that's the study of ancient Mesopotamia, by the way, the reason for inventing writing was the need to record the production and uh, distribution of commodities like beer. Further, what's hard to dispute is that one of the earliest pieces of writing on a clay tablet was information about beer rations for workers. Number one, the creation of civilization. Early humans, they were nomadic, but these people couldn't keep moving without abandoning their crops and therefore losing their sweet, sweet beer. It was time for a change. People had to stay put. They had to create more permanent shelter. These shelters were built close to each other because that would make the cooperation involved in farming a lot easier. And, well, that kind of sounds like a town, doesn't it? These farming villages kicked off a period in history known as the Agricultural Revolution or the Neolithic Revolution. This ended hunter-gathering and led to the world's first ever civilization, Mesopotamia, one of the first traces of organized society. Once people were moving less and leading more sustainable lives, they could spend less time worrying about being eaten and put thought into the challenges of their new lifestyles. The concepts they came up with, while well, they changed the world. Maths were supposedly invented so farmers knew where their land ended and the next guys began. The wheel may have been created to more easily transport goods like crops and beer. These and other ideas blossomed and snowballed into the world as we see it today. So thank you to beer for the pyramids, advertising, graphic design, medicine, farming, refrigeration, soda, writing, and everything else. We'll deal with the hangovers, the empty wallets, the socially awkward encounters, and the walks of shame. You just keep on tasting great. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.